In this video, we'll discuss how to bill hospitalist codes using the mdbilling.ca software. If you're new to OHIP billing, this video tutorial will provide you a good overview of the most common billing scenarios when working as a hospitalist. If you have an internal medicine designation, this video tutorial still applies to you. Although the service codes are different, the OHIP billing rules are the same. Simply replace the 00 in the service code with 13. For further understanding of OHIP billing, we kindly suggest that you familiarize yourself with the OHIP Schedule of Benefits, starting with Section A1 for Family Practice Designation and A78 for Internal Medicine Designation, and review all the appropriate hospitalist service codes and eligibility consideration. The first visit with a patient is usually a consultation after the patient has been referred from another physician. The service code for consultation is A005 for a GP. Consultations are subject to limitations of one per 12 month period unless the patient is referred to you a second time with a clearly defined unrelated diagnosis. In this case, the limit allowed is increased to two per 12 month period. Once the limit has been reached, a repeat consultation A006 can be billed for the second consult. When billing consultation services, a valid diagnostic code and referring physician billing number must be identified within the claim. Not providing a valid diagnostic code or referring physician billing number will cause the claim to be rejected. It's important to note that in some cases, components of other services may be incorporated into the elements of service for consultations. When this occurs, conflicting codes may not be eligible for payment. For example, a counseling service is not eligible for payment when rendered to the patient the same day as a consultation. Typically, when this occurs, the ministry will provide payment for the higher paying service code. There are two premium codes for the most responsible physicians. The first one is E082, MRP Premium for Admission Assessment. It is eligible to the admitting physician who is the MRP and is payable only once per patient per admission. It can be added to general assessments, general reassessments, and consultation service codes where the service date and the admission date for the patient fall on the same calendar date. E0A2 is a premium that bills at a rate of 30% of the admission assessment service, the parent code. The second MRP premium is for subsequent visits, E083. It can be added to hospital inpatient visits such as C122, C123, C142, C143, C132, C002, etc. E083 also pays 30% of the subsequent visit. Keep in mind that these two premiums cannot be billed on the same day. When two physicians are considered to be the MRP for the same patient on the same day, the physicians should communicate with each other and determine who should be billing the MRP premiums. The Ministry of Health will only pay one MRP premium and it will be to the physician who submits the billing first. When you're in the hospital's on-call roster, conducting the admission assessment and the MRP with respect to the inpatient care, then you can bill code A933. You should bill this code as opposed to A005, as it pays slightly higher. You are also eligible to add the E082 MRP premium. Generally, assessments are billed in fee value priority, meaning the highest paying assessment code is typically billed first, and subsequent follow-ups or patient review appointments are billed in descending fee value order. However, please ensure that you meet the required elements of service and payment rules in Section GP14 of the Schedule of Benefits before you bill any assessment codes. If you are in Internal Medicine Specialty, we've created an automatic code A13XA for billing assessment in descending fee value based on the patient data in our system and the limitations set out in the Schedule of Benefits. As an example, your first follow-up on a patient, you can bill A13XA. The system then generates the first applicable assessment code A133 for February 1st. On February 2nd, you saw the same patient, so you bill A13XA again. We will select the next assessment code for you, which is A131A. Now we're adding two more follow-ups on February 4th and 6th. From February 8th to 10th, you followed up on this patient again and billed A13XA. 
A134 was billed for the 8th and 9th. However, since A134 is only allowed twice per 12-month period, A138 would be billed on the 10th. Of course, you always have the option to override the automation code by billing the specific code you believe matches the service you conducted. For instance, if you're seeing the patient for the third time, but only to refill a prescription, you may want to bill a partial assessment A138 instead of the automatic code we choose, which would be an A131. We suggest you become acquainted with the consults and assessments preamble in the OHIP schedule of benefits before using this automation code. A special visit is typically a visit that requires a physician to assess a patient in response to a request initiated by the patient or patient's representative for a non-elective reason. As an example, an urgent care required of a patient due to imminent decline in health. The payment rules for special visit premiums can be found on page GP44 of the schedule. We recommend that you familiarize yourself with these payment rules. The tables outlining the applicable premium codes begin on page GP48 of the schedule. They identify the appropriate eligible fee codes depending upon where services are rendered and by the time of day and or day of the week, year services are rendered. Claims should be submitted using the appropriate A prefix consultation or assessment fee from the general listings in conjunction with the special visit premium. For example, on Thursday, February 2nd, 2017 at 5.30 p.m., Dr. Smith is called into an inpatient unit in the hospital. When Dr. Smith arrives, he sees the patient. Dr. Smith would bill the appropriate A prefix parent service code. Premiums are then added in accordance with the applicable table in the schedule. Dr. Smith was called into the inpatient unit, so we'll refer to Table 3 on page GP49. As Dr. Smith's services are rendered during a weeknight, Monday through Friday, 5 p.m. to 12 a.m., and this patient was the first one on the time block, as such, first person seen premium C994 is eligible for payment. Once Dr. Smith has completed seeing the first patient, he carries on to treat another patient that's in the unit at 6 p.m. Dr. Smith would bill the appropriate parent service code. He would then also bill an additional person seen premium, C995A. A different example, on Saturday, February 4th, 2017 at 9 a.m., Dr. Smith is at home and is called into the inpatient unit of the hospital. When Dr. Smith arrives, he sees the patient. As Dr. Smith's services are rendered during a weekend, and this patient was the first one on the time block, as such, first person seen premium C986 is eligible for payment. Dr. Smith was at home, so he can also bill C963 as he was outside the hospital premises. Once Dr. Smith has completed seeing the first patient, he carries on and sees another patient in the unit. Dr. Smith would bill the appropriate parent service code. He would then also bill an additional person seen premium, C987A. Key points to know when billing premiums. Travel premium can only be billed if the physician was outside the hospital premises. There are two common mistakes. One is billing travel and additional person seen premiums together, and the other is billing special visits with subsequent visits or counseling codes. Subsequent visits, also referred to as inpatient visits, are any routine assessment in hospital, for example during rounds, following the hospital admission assessment. The definitions and payment rules for subsequent visit services begin on page GP28 of the schedule. It's important to note that subsequent visits are subject to strict quantity limitations. The automatic codes IPTXA and IPTMA are created to assist with billing inpatient visits in accordance with the admission date for the patient. IPTXA is used for non-MRP inpatient visits, and IPTMA is used when you are the MRP, in which case we'll add the E083 premium for you. Whenever you bill IPTMA, we will compare the service date against the admission date. Once you click Save or Save and Submit, we will automatically bill the appropriate inpatient code according to the rules from the OHIP Schedule of Benefits. As always, we suggest you become acquainted with the OHIP Schedule of Benefits before using this or any automation code. 
Please remember, special visit premiums cannot be billed with subsequent visits. Whenever the subsequent visits have reached the weekly or monthly limit after five weeks of hospitalization, an intercurrent illness C121 can be billed. Please note the diagnostic code for the C121 needs to be different than that of the subsequent visits. Keep in mind the E083 MRP premium cannot be added to the C121. In this module, we'll review a few time-based codes, such as interview with relatives, K002, counseling of relatives, K015, and hospital inpatient case conferences with other medical personnel, K121. Most time-based codes are billed in either 10 or 30 minute time units or as specified by the Schedule of Benefits section. For every time unit, enter a quantity of one. For example, a 30-minute hospital inpatient case conference is conducted. Since this code has a 10-minute time unit, we'll use a quantity of three, as we've spent 30 minutes participating in the conference. We also suggest that you review the OHIP Schedule of Benefits pages for each of the time-based codes to determine the payment rules and minimum time details. Besides the service codes we've mentioned, there are three more commonly used service codes by hospitalists. When a primary care general practice service requires a more extensive examination than a minor assessment, an intermediate assessment A007 can be billed. A007 can also be billed for well baby care, which is a periodic assessment of a well child during the first two years of life. Home care application K070 is the service for completion and submission of an application for home care to a community care access center on behalf of a patient for whom the physician provides ongoing medical care. The limit for K070 is one per home care admission per patient. It is not payable when the patient is already receiving home care. When a health report form is required to submit to a CCAC on behalf of a patient who is applying for admission to a long-term care facility, the service code K038 can be billed for this service. Thank you for watching this tutorial. If you need further help, feel free to contact our support team or you can always upgrade to the full service plan. Whatever your needs are for billing, we are here to help you save time and earn more.